Mrs. Burling rather reproachfully says to her husband, Now, Arthur, I don't think you ought to talk business on an occasion like this. Here we can see through her admonishing tone that she is yet again her husband's social superior. She is preoccupied with social etiquette, portraying her as a cold, domineering woman. Then if we skip down to Burling saying, Quite so, I agree with you. I only mentioned it in passing. What I did want to say was that Sheila's a lucky girl. And I think you're a pretty for fortunate young man too, Gerald. Here we can see through the use of pause or sejura that his desire for the engagement to happen is emphasised. This is obviously because Gerald is of a higher social class and the marriage to Sheila will bring about social advancement for the Burlings. Then if we skip down to Eric and the stage direction set rather noisily, all the best, she's got a nasty temper sometimes, but she's not bad really, good old Sheila. We can see through those stage directions rather noisily that he is drunk at his sister's engagement, which foreshadows his later reckless behaviour. We can also see, however, a playful sibling rivalry. This is shown through the exclamation, good old Sheila. Then Sheila responds with, chump, I can't drink to this, can I? When do I drink? And Gerald says, you can drink to me. Stage directions then change for Sheila and she's quiet and serious now. All right then, I'll drink to you, Gerald. And for a moment, they look at each other. Here, this could be portrayed as quite an intimate moment. However, there's the undercurrent of some sort of underlying tension in their relationship. And we find out what that is later on. Then if we skip down to trying to be light and easy, you be careful or I'll start weeping. We can see that Sheila is quite emotional in this section. The stage directions he produces a ring case are important. When he says, smilingly, well, perhaps this will help to stop it. This prop helps depict Sheila's materialistic attitude. We are told from the stage directions that she's excited. Oh, Gerald, you've got it. Is it the one you wanted me to have? Here you can see that the caesura, or the pace here, emphasises her excitement. We also see that he is in charge, and she's not entirely progressive, which will become important later on when she's portrayed as a somewhat progressive character, especially because she is part of the younger generation. Then Sheila says, taking out the ring, Oh, it's wonderful. Look, mummy, isn't it a beauty? Here we can see, through the choice of word mummy, that she is quite immature and somewhat petulant. She could also be described in this section as materialistic or superficial. She kisses Gerald hastily. This is important as well. Now, Eric then says, steady the buffs. Sheila has put the ring on admiringly. I think it's perfect. Now I really feel engaged. This comment again emphasises how materialistic she really is. Now I really feel engaged. And she's also somewhat spoilt. Mrs Burling responds with, So you ought, darling. It's a lovely ring. Be careful with it. Here, the use of darling and the imperative, be careful, are patronising and emphasise her controlling nature. Then we have Sheila saying, Careful! I'll never let it out of my sight for an instant. But there's a certain shade, there's a certain element of being dubious that Priestley casts onto this statement. Mrs. Burling, smiling. Well, it came just at the right moment. That was clever of you, Gerald. Now, Arthur, if you've no more to say, I think Sheila and I had better go into the drawing room and leave you men. This is important because this gives us information on the social period that we were dealing with and especially beliefs on gender at the time. We can see here clearly the gender divide. Mrs Burling also assumes that Gerald will be the one making the decisions for Sheila, indication of society in, ge in general and the beliefs on gender at the time. Then Mr Burling says, rather heavily, I just want to say this, and noticing that Sheila is still admiring her ring, are you listening, Sheila? This concerns you too, and after all, I don't often make speeches at you. Here we can see that he interrupts his wife, showing that he's quite a rude and domineering man himself. This is also shown through his question, are you listening, Sheila? He's quite a vapid man as, and is obsessed with having everybody's attention. Then we have another immature comment from Sheila. I'm sorry, Daddy. Actually, I was listening. The use of Daddy 
especially considering her age, emphasises her immaturity and again portrays her as some sort of petulant child 